Hello and welcome. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today. And I am excited to show you the next signature in my Vintage Grunge Junk Journal. So if you are just joining me for the very first time, welcome. I hope if you like this video, you'll give me a thumbs up and click on subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. Um, this is a project that is uh, been going on for a little bit and I've taken a break here or there. Uh, but it's getting quite chunky. I'm going to be making a new cover for it because it's going to get really big. So uh, when I started out, I thought I would um, just make a cover and do the basic part of the signatures, put them in the book, and then decorate them. But I'm learning about myself that I really want to uh, finish a signature and then move on to the next one. So um, this is the first time I've ever done a junk journal from start to finish in a bound book like this. So, you know, it's kind of a learning process for me um, to figure out how I like to work. Um, this one ended up with a specific theme and I, I wasn't even sure that, that it was going to become so literal. Um, part of my challenge for myself was maybe try to be more artistic and not take everything so literally. But this second signature kind of really went literal for me. But I really had a lot of fun doing it. I worked on it mostly this weekend, um, over the Memorial weekend, which was kind of perfect um, space for me to be in, uh, to work on this. So it was really a kind of a good thing. So if you're just joining me for the very first time, I'm working on a vintage grunge junk journal based on a ghost town in California called Bodie. And I had visited there a few years ago, taken lots of pictures, and I always wanted to do something with them. So it turned into my theme for this journal. So in the last episode, I went through, um, since I decided to go ahead and do details um, in the journal, I went ahead and did a flip through of my first signature, which is kind of based on um, houses in Bodie. So I've done that one. Um, like I said, if you're just joining me for the very first time, I'm going to put a link to this whole playlist down in the description so that uh, you can watch it from the beginning if you're just catching this one for the first time. Also, um, I'm going to be doing a drawing at the end of this. I don't know for sure what will be in it. Um, probably this book cover because I'm going to be making a new one. And then um, just a bunch of goodies from this journal. I was even thinking about um, making maybe just kind of a, almost blank journal using the papers and things that I've made for this one uh, just to get you started. So I'm not sure what it'll be, but at the end of this series, about a week after, I'm going to do the drawing. And to get entered in the drawing, all you need to do is make a comment on any one of the episodes in this series. So your name will go into the drawing. It could be in there multiple times. And then I will draw and send you a box of goodies. So like I said, today I want to do the second signature. Um, I should also mention uh, in the description, I'm going to be putting links to uh, my Etsy shop where I have three different or two different three two different paper packs that um I've created for backgrounds for this uh this book a, a one's just a fresco finishes and then one's kind of a full wallpaper vintage wallpaper grungy finishes and then also there's a freebie file that I will put in the description all kinds of things um including the photos that I have taken myself and altered um, for my journal. So you can have access to those too. So um, the first one, like I said, was kind of based loosely on a house uh, in Bodie. And then it ended with, um, you know, started with the front door, ended with a barn and the, a truck. So I wanted kind of um, a segue to the next uh, section. The next signature is going to be based on the church in Bodie. So I'm going to take this one out, and this will be the beginning. And I guess I don't need this cover anymore either. So I'm going to go through, and then any kind of little techniques I might show also. I've, I've got some samples here. So if you've been following along, you know that in, in Bodie, you look through the windows and kind of peek into buildings, and you're like peeking through time because there's lots of things left behind there. Um, so it's just kind of walking through history in a way. And I wanted that same kind of feel in my journal. So I'm a lot of my photos were done on vellum so that you can see through to the next layer. And then also using some thinner papers and the vellum papers and doors and that sort of thing, just so you're kind of looking through layers. So like I said, this one's going to be for the church. And 
when I started out, I wasn't really kind of sure what all to put in there. And I had made my signature with some music paper from um, hymn, uh, hymn books and different things, um, organ music and that type of thing. And it was pretty blank still. So once I allowed myself to go and do some finishing touches, it really became fun and a lot easier for me. So I really found that I do like to work that way. So on the, the very front of this one, um, I did a, 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 the front of the church. And I know you can't see it very clearly. Maybe if I stick a piece of, of paper behind here, uh, uh, it's not gonna fit in there. I can put a card in here. I haven't made one that size, but I could. But I like seeing the music paper through it because it's all kind of that, you know, see-through illusion kind of thing. So for this one I chose, I have a, a, an old vintage hymn book that was given to me by my junking buddy and I just love it. It's really old. It's kind of from the early 1900s. Um, so it, it, it kind of fits the era. Some of the songs in here um, were from very early 1900s. So I feel like because Bodhi kind of started in 1850s and went through um, to the mid 1960s too, I think, something like that then uh, it all kind of fit. So I would go through and actually just kind of look for words or titles that fit whatever page. So I love this one, it's called um, Leave It There. And because this was a mining town and things were left behind, I kind of liked that title. And then also in the first line, it says, um, if the world from you withhold of its silver and its gold. That's the first line of the song. And because it was a gold mining town, I just, I like that irony. So that is my first page. Um, and like I said, I left because uh, in Bodhi, there's lots of peeling wallpaper and ratty torn things. I kind of like things to be torn edged and even kind of floppy and peel back. So um, I've kind of left that open in case you do want to tuck something else in there. So the inside of that page then, I wanted to leave it blank because I'm kind of going now into my, um, into my pages, but I wanted something that you could see through that, again, that hint of looking through the past. So I made a little card, and this is a photo that I found on the internet, and it's of a group of, of church women and from about that era. So I really liked that. So I just, what I've been doing is, you know, finding photos that I can use in addition to the photos that I already had. And then when I print them out, because um, some of these I can share, um, some of them I'm not going to because I don't know about copyright and that kind of thing. Um, but you can go on the internet and find your own. You can see that this this photo was too wide for my, uh, pocket that I needed. So I, I didn't care if I was even cutting people partly out of it, or you could shrink it down. Um, I tend to, when I'm printing on my, on my printer, just for speed and not playing around with these too much, is on my, I use an Epson and I use an, a Mac, an Apple. And on preview is where you can, you know, preview pictures that you've uh, downloaded and that kind of thing. You're able to adjust the size and uh, with tools, the size and color and that sort of thing of your photos. I kind of get it to maybe a size that I need it to be to fit into my pocket. And then I go into um, my settings on my, uh, to pr on my print settings and it will allow me to maybe print four pictures on a page and you just have to be careful when you do that, it might change the scale to like 102% or 112%. I just click on scale and I make sure that it's 100%. So that way I'm getting my whole picture to the size that I had asked it to be so that it'll fit. Sometimes, you know, that works or not, but I'm just mentioning that in case you don't play around with um, sizes and things that much. That's kind of the quick way that I do it. And then I just also make sure that I, I click on print media and quality and click best because otherwise they're gonna be grainy anyway because they're old photos, but at least that can kind of maybe help them out a little bit. So um, that's the two things that I always do is just double check my size before I print and my quality. So the other thing that I like to do with these photos is then aid make them look 
kind of shabby. So what I've done is um, I, I've just printed it on regular white cardstock, nothing fancy. And then I like to get that sort of grainy effect, um, like a canvas effect. Uh, old photos often had that the way what they were printed on. So to do that, I take um, my Mod Podge and I wanted to show these two different ones. This is actually a different photo, but this is what it would look like before I've done anything to it. I, I like to use my, um, my Distress Oxide Vintage Photo and go around the edges and even some, you know, here or there. And if you do that, when you introduce then the Mod Podge over the top, because it's the oxide that I'm using, it'll change the color and effect of the, the Distress Oxide that you put on it. And I kind of like that. Um, I did a couple of experiments where this one, I had um, put the, dis uh, the Vintage Photo Distress Oxide on and then did my Mod Podge and it smeared. On this one, I didn't. I used um, the a different color, I think, actually. I think I, on this one, I think I used um, the Ground Espresso just to give it a little bit darker, different color around the edge. And then I took my, you have two options. I took my splatter uh, stamp to make some extra watermarks on it. And I've been using kind of a mixture of Vintage Photo, the Ground Espresso, Walnut Stain, any of those natural colors, um, both in inks and in oxide, just to get some kind of different effects. So you can play around and see what you like to use, you know, the best. But this one, like I said, is after you've gotten the oxide uh, wet, it, it kind of yellows and, and blends a little better, which I kind of like. So, and then this one has the, the splatters. Now, if you don't want um, these splatters to uh, become a mess and, you know, when you've introduced the Mod Podge, then you need to use uh, like an archival ink, something that won't be affected by water or do that step after you've gotten it wet with the Mod Podge. So why I get it, why I do the Mod Podge is to get that grainy effect. I just brush a coat over the top and while it's still wet, I take a piece of my scrim and I'm just gonna grab, this is the one I use. You can see where I've put it on photos. Um, while it's wet, I just lay that down and go over it with my, this is the brayer that I use just for gluing things and flattening them out. So I just do that and then peel it up right away and you'll get that, I don't know if you can see it in the camera here, but you'll get that texture, um, that sort of canvas texture on it. So I like to do that with, uh, photos that I'm going to use kind of as uh, little journal cards. So I've done that on, on this one. And then I went ahead and just, this was on white cardstock, so I just went ahead with my vintage photo, got the back, did some stitching around the edge. Um, I've been using black for this whole journal just for a contrast. And then I did my lines. I've kind of shown this before. Uh, where is my corrugated cardboard? You can make your own uh, line stamp out of corrugated cardboard. So you just take a scrap. Um, it's really hard to kind of get all the excess glue and the little bits off of it. I've shown this in previous videos. I used just a really sharp little ruler to kind of scrape, metal ruler to kind of scrape all the little bits off. Once you get that all clean, then um, I've gone over it with probably about four coats of gesso um, so that it, the ink won't absorb into my cardboard, you know, anymore. So once you've gotten several coats, um, that's sealed pretty good. Then I just use um, archival ink um, in black soot for this so that it doesn't, um, any water I introduce when I'm doing my, um, my distressing won't run my lines. So you can see they don't come out really clear depending on how much ink you put on and how hard you press. But I like that. Um, for this grungy journal, this is the perfect kind of thing. I have other stamps, um, rubber stamps, that will make clearer lines. But for this purpose, um, I really liked just kind of the messy ones. So I put the little church ladies in here. And then the next um, page is the cover of the hymn journal, that, the hymn book that I had. And then I had taken um, some of the... Um, picture of the music on the inside and I think I had it go through 
I did. I had it, I just laid the book open. And so it has um, the kind of the bend in the music, which I kind of like too. Now these two uh, pages were not right next to each other. I just chose two songs that I really liked for this book and then used, um, I think I probably did it on iPicky, put these two together, or I could have done it on Adobe Illustrator. Now, I've been using so many different things that I can't remember because I did this a few weeks ago. But I put the two together um, just to make kind of a folio. I think I'll, I'll, I can put that in, in a kit or freebies, but it'll be available to you, I think. So I've just done that. I, I chose He Loves Me, Why I Sing, and then um, I made this into a little door. I've shown this before, but since I'm going to do the whole flip through, I thought I'd do the whole thing. So I went ahead, um, since I've shown this before, I went ahead and put the acetate in the window. I wasn't sure originally what all I was going to do. The inside cover of it before I put the acetate on and cut the door, I lined because it was just um, done on a, I had printed this on just a piece of cardstock, so it was plain. So I just aged with my vintage photo around, and then I had printed using tissue paper, just regular tan colored tissue paper, something that I had copied or taken a photo of out of my childhood Bible, and it was um, the calendar for reading your daily scriptures. So I, I just did that, and then it's kind of started peeling back, and because I want things to be tattered, I'm just kind of letting it do that. So that was just the inside cover. I've thought about adding something to this um, to decorate it up more, but I've been kind of keeping it simple because... But it, I just imagine, I don't know what it was like there, but I just kind of imagine because it was kind of an out of the way little gold mining town that things were pretty simple. So I'm kind of leaving it that way. Um, the next folio in this one, I, I made, um, because I was thinking church, I was trying to think of different things, you know, music, church music and different um, paper things so that I could make my folios out of that. So I thought of the a program in church where they'll have like who's speaking, the scripture they're going to read, the songs they're going to sing, that sort of thing, any kind of announcements, that kind of thing. They would do these little, you know, just a little two-page little um, program. So I wanted to do something like that. You can go online and actually find free printable programs for church. Uh, church bulletins, they call them sometimes. So you can just scan that on the computer. I found one, they're mostly current, you know, for churches now. Um, so they're really modern looking. But I did find this one that looked um, to me kind of vintage. And I did like that it had a kind of a patriotic theme. And so I took it, I did have to make some adjustments to it um, for, for my use. And then I backed it... Um, with uh, some another page from the Bible. So that was just kind of, I took this part from the freebie download thing, but then I kind of turned it into my own, uh, my own background paper. So uh, that one I think I can make available too. So uh, I've kind of just left it. I did some stitching around. And again, I don't know if I'll add anything to that or not. These two pages um, were kind of simple and no real tuck or place for journaling or anything. I did that really early on before I decided I was going to let myself go ahead and um, do the details. And so I kind of was stuck with that. So um, that's part of why I think I like to think about the whole thing first and how it's going to play out. Then I don't end up with kind of odd things like this. But I really, I still like it. And I made up for it, I think, as you get further into this, there's plenty of room for writing and journaling and that kind of thing. So I'm really excited about the next page because that's where I started this weekend. This part I kind of already had done, except for the church ladies. So the next page, I just love how this turned out. So I want to share how I did this. Um, I'm going to take these little guys out and give you my thought process here. So... Because now I was going from the outside of the church to the inside of the church, um, I 
I remembered seeing these kind of pretty shaped windows, but they were pretty simple. And I thought it'd be fun to maybe find what those windows look like on the inside. And a lot of churches had stained glass windows. I know that, you know, in Bodhi is probably really simple and they may not have been colorful stained glass at all. But I, I just searched again online for vintage um, stained glass church windows. And I found this picture. I'll show you um, how they came out when I printed four on a page. Um, I really liked how simple they were. And even though they have some color, it's just really subtle, which I wanted for this journal. I didn't want too much color, if any. So I just loved these. I, they were just so pretty and perfect. And what the picture that I found online was really just one window. So I went into my um, program and uh, added, did three together to a scale that would fit on my page as kind of a pocket. So I printed those on vellum. And these this kind of thing will be the kinds of things that will be in that little goodie the, the prize at the end when I do the drawing. So um, I have some of these and I went ahead and just printed that out and I put, um, because that piece was just the back side of um, this bulletin cover, uh, it was just a plain back side. I used one of my fresco finishes. You can see um, one of the originals that was done on book page and glued that down just for like the background walls of the church. And then I wanted this to be a pocket, um, but obviously I didn't want it to go from the top because of the points and it would have just been weird. So I really kind of wanted something from the outside. And because I've been doing this whole layer and seeing things through, I love the idea of putting people behind there. So you know that um, little church rhyme that is, you know, um, here's the church and here's the steeple, open the door and there's no people. And then it goes this way and here's the church and here's the steeple, open the door and look at all the people. That was something that it, I learned in childhood in church and I just remembered that. So I thought that would just be so much fun. So I found I, online, I um, searched um, church people from the 1800s or so, I'm not sure exactly the words I typed in. Sometimes I had to try it multiple ways, but I ended up finding this picture and I don't know if I have one. I don't have it in front of me now, but um, that you could see what the actual, let's see, here it is. So this was the actual picture that I found and it was from 1907 in Florida but it was the right time and it was Sunday just before church. So I liked that they were long, they were all spread out long and skinny. So really just printing my sheet of four, um, you know, going into preview and print and then selecting the, how many do you want to print? Four, not how many copies, but how many on a page. I did four and it scaled it so that when I cut those people out, I did it kind of um, in like a Tim Holtz fashion, his paper dolls. And I know he has groups, so he may have something that's this size. I don't have that collection. So I just took, um, printed it on white cardstock. And then I, before I fussy cut it out, I glued it to a second piece just so it would be a little thicker. And then I just fussy cut them out. And I just love how it fit perfect behind my windows. So I really didn't adjust the scale or anything. It was just kind of one of those serendipitous moments, again, where it fit perfect. So I've done that. I did add a piece of rusted uh, vintage lace, just so I'd have a little pull that you know you need to pull out. And then on the back side, because it was so small, instead of having it be like a journal card, I just went ahead and put a quote because I love to collect quotes. So this one says, the church is designed to nourish the imperfect, the struggling, and the exhausted, which for an 1800s um, gold mining town, I thought that was perfect because I'm sure they're, they're, uh, their life was a struggle. So I, I've just put that just on a piece of scrap um, book page, I think, and then that was a scrap of the little fresco paper that I had used from the back that I had just trimmed off. So I just, I'm really happy with how that turned out. So I have my, my people in the church. And then originally when I saw this, you know, this is kind of what it would look like from the inside maybe. I, I kept thinking of um, the church benches 
we call them pews. I don't know where you are in the world, so I don't know, you know, if you if you use that same term. But that's what we had, that you sat on these benches. And then in the back of the bench was a little rack. And that would be where they would have like the hymn book and maybe the the church bulletin was there for you to see what was going to be happening that day, that sort of thing. So um, I uh, wanted to do that with my uh, wood, the, I think it's, it's the 3D fades, the wood embossing folder. So I used that and I've, I used that in the last um, journal project too. Um, and I don't have the folder right here to show you, but it's, it's a 3D, um, Tim Holtz 3D embossing folder for the wood grain. And when you do that, I don't think I have a piece here now um, of the whole thing, but you you run it through the folder. Here's a piece. You run it. I did it on just um, plain brown cardstock, craft cardstock. And when you run it through, uh, he recommends doing it three times. But because paper is brittle, if you run it through without getting it wet first, it's going to tear. It's going to break right through. But you really do like to do those uh, three passes because it gets all the details. So what you do is you put it in your folder first, and then you spritz it with some water um, just to moisten it and it softens the paper up. That way you won't get these tears. So you, you run it through and then to make mine this color, I just use a combination of different um, ink, ink sprays and oxides using the walnut stain and um, the vintage photo, I think, and maybe even another one. And then if you spritz it with water again, it kind of oxidizes all that, um, the oxid the oxidized distressed ones, and it kind of gives you a modeled kind of thing. So again, you, you play around with it, um, and then you can always go over with a darker one, and it will just bring the, the wood grain up. Um, so you just kind of play around, and you can get lots of different wood grain finishes. So I, I made some wood to, um, to make my pew, and then my pocket. For my pocket, I used, um, now I have to find it. One second. This is another Sizzix die, and it's from Tim Holtz. I'll find the name of it and put the link below. Um, but I, this caught my eye because it had these little slats. So this is actually for a pocket that you would make, you know, attach it, and then these are all little tucks. But I decided to cut it apart, um, and then it would look like my pocket for my uh, for my my pew. So it has this a solid part. And then all these little cutouts. This is what one looks like, just cut from the craft cardstock before I've colored it. And so what I did was to get this wider part at the bottom and then the two, I just cut it here and then left two and then just cut the top off. So then I end up with, you know, some scraps that I'm, I'm hanging on to in my little box here. So this actually is the top part of my scrap to me looks like a piece of fence. So now I know in the future, if I need to make fence, I just make a bunch of these and cut them apart. So um, that's what I used to make my little pocket. And then I just um, stitched it onto my bench. So they're both pockets. And then I needed something to put inside. So I thought of um, things that you have in church that could be cards, right? So the first one I thought of was prayer request cards. Um, when I kept thinking of that picture of those three, those women in the front, there's always, you know, a women's auxiliary or kind of thing where they organize uh, things. And uh, one of the things is a lot of times they get together and do all these prayer requests. So I made up my own card. I got the wording. Again, you can just um, search online for um, prayer request cards. You can get them currently for churches now. And so I just found one that I really liked the wording of it. And then, but I made my own so that I could make it in kind of a vintage looking script. So um, it's just a little card. Again, I used my uh, corrugated cardboard stamp for the lines and then um, just, you know, made these little prayer request cards. This one I wanted to show to. On this one, you see it's kind of simple as far as the distressing. This is just with vintage photo uh, distress oxide, just around. 
Then what I did, I wanted to show how, you know, you can make it even look grungier. So if you take a little water after that and just kind of let it dribble on there, it'll soak in a little bit and, you know, kind of water stain that. You could also use that um, stamp that I have that's the splatter stamp and do the same thing too to, to make some more watermarks. So, you know, I'm just trying to get everything kind of uh, grungy looking. So I've got Prairie Quest cards in the big one. And then because a hymn book goes in here, I wanted to make a cute little hymn book for that. That's just like a little, I just love tiny things. So I actually just scaled down that cover again and then added it um, just real simply. I just put a rectangle here. Um, of another color just for the back of my book. So once I printed it out again, I did it so I could do four on a page so I'd have extras and then just cut that out and now fold it and that's the cover of my little my little mini book. I printed it out on um, just plain parchment paper too. So that's kind of what that looks like. Again, that'll be something that's in my little giveaway um, at the end. And then I just used my vintage photo um, to distress that. And then I literally used um, some scrap paper. Oh, and I forgot to show this. I'll show you this paper that I've just recently ordered. Um, I had printed this very front page onto a paper that I recently ordered. When I was looking for different parchments, um, because I wanted to have some vintage looking paper, I found where I could actually buy some online. So I'll put the link to this too. Um, it wasn't horribly expensive and it just saves your own printer ink. I don't know if you're familiar with Tom Chalky, um, but recently I um, I downloaded a bunch of vintage stuff that you can buy online. And one of the things he has are some backgrounds of just vintage paper. So I could have, and I think in some of the pages I have done that, where I'll just print that out as my old paper. But when I was searching to see if different what different parchments I could buy, um, packs of parchment paper, I found this. And it's just, um, somebody's done this with like an old, old paper textures. And it comes a pack of 90 sheets, I think. And it's in three different colors, but they're double-sided. So it's already printed for you. And then you can print onto this. So I use that just to play around um, to print this music sheet on. So when I cut it, I have those scraps. So I just use those scraps for the inside of this book because I don't want to waste anything. And I, I don't mind that it has, um, you know, bits of music on it because it's actually a hymn book. So that's going to be my little, my little hymn, hymn book that you can write in there. And then the next page is, um, I, I showed this in a previous video, uh, that this was one sheet of, of organ music paper that I had. So the book is kind of big um, because it's, you know, to use for the organ. And all I did was, uh, I didn't cut anything. I folded it back so that it was the size I needed to fit in my book. So that made me have a pocket on the back side. And then it was still a little bit long. So I folded it over this way. So now I have a pocket this way and just a little tuck here too. So that was just with one sheet of the original organ music. So I chose the song, I love to tell the story. And then I, I, I laughed because when you see what I did next, this says hanky on it, which to me is short for a handkerchief, right? So I just, I liked that, the, that this was called I love to tell a story because it's a journal. And then the next page that I had put um, was just some, coffee stained paper that I had and I had cut it down so I ended up with this piece and then a little piece that I'm using later in this book. So before I show this though um, on the front first pocket I decided to put a collection envelope and I've shown this before because I did it a while ago. Um, I did it on my Cricut um, I created a again I went online and looked for a a church collection envelope for the wording. Um, I made my own, but I, I just, I wanted to see what maybe some of the wording would be on it. So I found one, I used the uh, little quote that they had on it. Um, and then I really thought it was funny, just the different things th that they had where you could um, say, I want, you know, this 
amount to go for this, the missionary or the church extension project or the Bible society, different things. And then your name. And then I, I put Bodie, California on there and 1880 and left a blank. So I went ahead and created my own on in, in a pattern for a coin envelope on my Cricut as a print and cut. So I have that too that will be available in a kit. And then the next one um, was another kind of like, what else do, ha, goes on in a church, right? Well, you also have weddings in a church. So I was gonna originally keep this pretty simple and just have it all be writable pages, but I thought, you know, I just, I wanna do something decorative to it. So I had this really pretty piece of lace left over and I liked, I was just gonna originally just leave it in there kind of sticking out just for texture. And then I thought, well, why can't I make that into a pocket? So that led me to um, stitching it down just on the edges. I did leave a little bit hanging off. I may add, I may sew on another piece of paper here or something. I haven't decided yet. I'm gonna leave this little bit unfinished so that at the very end of this project, there'll be something new that you haven't seen. So I decided though that this would be perfect for a little wedding uh, photo. So I did another little card and it can go all the way through. It's I didn't do a bottom on it because I wasn't sure what I wanted to put in here. But I did a little, I found a little photo um, again online of a wedding during that period of time. And I picked one that had kind of a simple dress um, and they're all different. I mean, you, some weddings, the women are wearing black. So uh, it, it was, uh, but you could tell it's a wedding. So I don't know. I just found one that I kind of liked uh, and did the same thing where I printed it on cardstock. I used my scrim to give it that texture, did the aging. You can even see some water staining here. So I really like how that turned out. The When you use the oxide and then wet it on something you photocopied, it also wants to run the photocopy ink too. So it's really kind of can give it a really nice effect. But I like that. You can even see it came through on the other side. And then this um, is a little bit scrap of ribbon that I had. And I wanted to show you really a quick, easy way. Um, and the same with this lace. You can see that it was much lighter. And I didn't want to take the time to coffee stain or tea stain this and let it dry. So the fastest, quick way to do this if you don't have some made up ahead is to just take um, take your ribbon, which in my case it was white, and I don't want to do it on here because I don't want to get my paper wet, but I would just spritz this with some water and then take your uh, vintage photo, just the dauber. You don't even really need to put any more ink on it because there's enough on here already. And you're just going to smoosh that around and it will totally stain this. And then just use your heat gun and dry it real quick. So I made um, enough to do a couple of little things. And it was just, I mean, it takes seconds to do that. So uh, that's just a quick uh, way to just to age something if you don't have um, some already done papers or ribbons and lace and stuff. Same thing, I didn't have to get this wet, but I just went over over it with my uh, with my dauber with just that little bit of ink on it just to dirty that up. And then I like how when I stitched this side, um, my, my lace was kind of wonky and I was kind of trying to stretch it flat which made it kind of pull a little bit and it has this curl, which I kind of like, because again, I'm trying to have things not be perfect. So that's that, I'm gonna leave this just for writing. Um, and then, like I said, I may attach something. This could be an envelope, I'm not sure yet, but something will probably get attached to this. And then I also like to, you know, take this and just kind of tatter it up, you know, pull it and make it a mess. Okay, so that's that. I did have an idea for here, but I haven't done it yet, so that'll come later. Um, and then this was that little bottom scrap of that of that piece, and I just kind of sewed it off center here so that it was just another page. So you can write on all of this. You can add, you know, this is a little pocket here. So there's still room to add things. I'm kind of tempted. Um, I've had two people now uh, offer to purchase this book when I'm finished. And so I hadn't thought about doing that. Uh, I'm half tempted to start another one so that I, I can keep one and then sell one. Um, but I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna take the time to do that or not.
But in the meantime, I thought, well, maybe I'll keep it a little simple because these people are obviously people that do this too. And then that way it leaves them room to add their creativity and, and journal in it. So I'm tempted to kind of just leave it, keep it simple. Um, for the next page, again, it was just the back side of um, my, of this, my bulletin. And so it, there was totally plain here. And so I thought, okay, I need something next. So what else do I have in a church is a Bible. So my husband had his, um, I had his childhood Bible, which was, mine was red. So I didn't really want to use red, but his was black, the kind that has the little zipper and stuff. So I took his Bible and I scanned the cover of it. Um, and I have another one. I printed it out twice. The really weird thing about this, I printed it just on cardstock. I took a scan of the front cover and of the back cover, and I had to adjust the color a little bit. Because there's so much black ink to print this, you can actually feel a texture. It's the weirdest thing. I, I was so surprised um, that it actually, it actually feels maybe not as textured as the actual Bible, but you feel the texture, which was just kind of weird to me. So I just folded that in half, trimmed it, and um, then I needed pages for the inside and a liner for the inside. So I actually just took, I had a scrap of that tissue paper that I had used here. I, had, I must have printed it twice um, because I had a piece and so I just used that and just glued it down um, just to keep it kind of simple for a liner. And then for the inside paper, I, I didn't have any plain lined paper that I had already coffee stained. And I kind of have this habit of when I'm in stores like TJ Maxx, Marshalls, uh, any kind of discount stores like that, I will look on their clearance rack. And if they have, a lot of times they'll have journals, blank journals, notebooks and things like that, uh, notepads that have these really kind of cool lines on it. They're not perfect. They're just kind of like hand drawn, but the cover will be damaged or something. So it'll be like $3 or whatever it is. So I buy those just for the paper on the inside and then just, you know, take them apart. So I have a bunch of this paper. I haven't coffee stained it. Um, so I just used it and cut it down to fit into my, my little Bible. So now it's just like a mini blank journal. And then to um, a place to put it, in my husband's um, Bible, there was a bookmark that was the Ten Commandments. And I thought, oh, that's perfect. So I'll use it as like a belly band or a tuck or something. So originally I thought I would leave it open um, where you can kind of do this sort of deal. Um, but then I decided just to make it a pocket. So I added, I went ahead and retyped the whole thing out um, on my computer so that I can get it the size that I wanted um, in a text that I liked, a type that I liked, and then um, just printed it out on cardstock again. And for this one, I did want it to be a different color than vintage photo, just to, for a contrast. So for that one, I used the, the ground, Distress Oxide Ground Espresso, um, just for a different color. And then I also used, you can see my little splatter stamp. Um, I also used that on it too, just to give uh, some water mark. So that was really just done on uh, white cardstock again, and then uh, altered with the inks. And then I used some of my uh, rusted scrim that I had just for, kind of reminds me of like a shroud kind of fabric. And then I happen to have a, pa a paper pack that had this kind of already distressed looking dark red. So I just used the back of that just for a little bit of color. So that's that page. And then for the back, I'm getting to the end here. The other thing that happens in churches, at least in the country, I grew up in um, a town where when I was really young, we went to a church that was a really old country style church. So we actually did this. Um, baptisms were in the river because we did not have a baptismal um, in our church. So we actually went down to the river. And so I went online and looked for um, old church uh, bab river baptism photos from that era. And, you know, it's not real clear again, but I like that. 
Um, I was going to leave this as a pocket where you saw through, but it was such a distorted, grainy photo. Uh, and I did it on my vellum again, which even makes that worse. That I went ahead and put a piece of my rusted fabric behind it just to kind of allow you to be able to see what you're looking at. So um, I, I did that. I did just a little zigzag stitch at the bottom and a straight stitch around, stitched that to the fabric and then um, and then just glued it down to the page so that I'd have a little pocket there. So that was my church baptism. Well, then you need for a card to go inside of this. I thought, well, I can do like a, they, they would give you maybe a certificate when you were baptized so or, or a card or something. So I just found another a one online that was from that era. And this is 1850 and just, you know, printed that out, shrunk it down. It's pretty distorted, but that's okay. Um, and again, I just used, uh, this is just some vintage photo oxide again, and then splats of water, which gives you this effect, this water. And then with the ink too, it kind of bled some of the ink. So I really like that. Again, I did my thing on the back. You can see the water stains here too. So I just, I like how that turned out. And then the, often the thing that you would do after the baptism is you would have a church picnic. So I loved this photo. I found this online and it's really a bad photo, but I printed it again onto just plain cardstock. I loved how they set it up. So I could just see this being in that gold winding town. They don't have picnic tables. A lot of times you would see picnics, photos of picnics just out on the grass or, you know, in the weeds or wherever, but you couldn't necessarily tell that those were from a church picnic then, right? So this one you can because they have used, they took all the pews out of the church and you can't see, but it's really long. They've, they, and they, you can even see the curve of the seat and they have just lined those up uh, end to end so that they have a place to lay out their tablecloths and their food uh, and they're just having their church picnic then so I just love that so I again I did it the same thing with the scrim to give it that grainy uh, texture and then the vintage photo and spritz it with water the whole deal so that's just another little journal card um, there so kind of Finishing up there. And then this one, I'm getting close to uh, what was going to be the next signature. And I had actually already started this page before I decided I was going to really finish everything out. And I had taken, this is actually from the schoolhouse. There was an organ in there um, in the photo. But because it was uh, kind of related to church too, I went ahead and made it be the transition from my church to my school, uh, which is going to be the next section. So I went ahead and put it in here. Um, again, it's on my uh, rusted scrim, uh, the fresco paper. It's back behind here. There are actually some of my wood planks that had some old paint on it. Um, and that was just to give me another uh, end page to that section. And I did go ahead and leave it open to make it a pocket. And then I needed something to put in the pocket. So the other thing that I thought about from those era of church um, and I did look it up to see what year it started was Vacation Bible School. So when we went to church, um, when you were out of school on vacation, you went to every day instead of your parents needed to work or, you know, whatever. So you you couldn't just be home. So you went to Vacation Bible School and it, you went every day, but it was a day of, you know, learning and craft projects and activities and outdoor time and that kind of thing, S song, singing, all kinds of stuff. So that was always a lot of fun. And so I, I, uh, I needed something to do with Bible school because to me, you know, when I was doing this, uh, this organ was actually in a school. So the first ba vacation Bible school, I think was like 1862 or something like that, 1892. It was in this era. So I went ahead and, and let it be part of my journal. So I couldn't really think of what I wanted to go in there. So I just made a, a lot of times you would get a certificate or a badge or a little pin or something, you know, that you'd went to vacation Bible school. So I just made one on, on, uh, Adobe Illustrator and I just, you know, did a little border and VBS stands for vacation Bible school. And then the year, and actually I think I did 1894 because when I looked Wikipedia said that's when it started. So there you go. Just another little 
tag with an eyelet and just some uh, uh, the kitchen string that I've made. Uh, I have a whole batch of it here that was used to tie up my rusting bu bundles. So I used some of that. So it's more like an ornament, but there you go. So the last, last page is um, the back side of this folio. And I use the song Scatter Seeds of Kindness because it's going into my school section. And I just always think of children for some reason when I, you know, when I think of this. And then it's a photo of the back side of that church. So there is a pocket here. I haven't decided if or what I will put in that. But that now is the end of my uh, church flip through. So the next one coming up is going to be the school. I've already started it. It may take me a little bit to get it finished. Um, I got a lot of things going on. So I hope that if you enjoyed this one, you'll give me a thumbs up. Check out the freebies down below. Um, I'll probably be adding a few things to it when I upload this. And um, if you're interested in those fresco papers, I'll put a link to my Etsy shop. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.